doing veteran film as well. It is uh, 2020. Oh, my name's first year. Four to five hours of in person. So quite a lot um, in person in comparison to other people. And then I've got um, a couple seminars, maybe three online. Approximately 10 hours per week. I have around 15 hours altogether because we do a lot of labs in person. So there's a lot of prep work for that online. For subject, I'm in four course in lab, like six to 11 hours. Depending on which week it is, uh, we have either 10 or six weeks. Six, six hours per week, sorry. That sounds about right. Most of my lectures are asynchronous, so I can go back and look at them whenever I want. And that's really good for me because I can pause the video, go back, um, decide when to do them, um, just organize in my own time. You can pause them, you can rewind, you can speed it up, slow it down. It saves a lot of time for commutation to the university. You don't need to wake up like two hours before your lecture, you can just wake up 15 minutes before. Everything can be laid out in front of you. Um, anything, anyone, anything you've forgotten, you're, you're in your room, so everything's right there uh, for you. Like the chat function, it means that, you know, there's no awkward questions um, because everyone's always putting things in there and no one really can put a name to a face. You've got, you've got your computer with you so you can Google stuff while, while you're doing it, which I guess you could probably do. Disadvantages, okay. Um, <laughs> How'd you ask? I'd say the disadvantages is the social side. Um, you can't really, you, have a, you don't have the opportunity to speak to people afterwards. You don't have the opportunity to meet course mates as much. Well, you don't get to go up a lot, go outside and meet people. Um, obviously, the social stuff is not fun. And we have no social time, we get very little face to face time. So the group projects are much harder, and um, it's harder to like, stay engaged with an online lecture because it's, there's so many more distractions around, it's, it's much less engaging than just watching someone speak for, for hours. Lecturers struggling with technology, which means that you lose a lot of time, like, especially when students mute the lecturers or there's a chat box pinging the whole way through a lecture. It makes it very difficult to concentrate. Sometimes you get people who turn their cameras off and turn their microphones off and you're just left alone. There are always associated tasks, um, extra reading, um, just loads of things to do and to look at by yourself and the lecture itself, I pause it every five seconds. So it takes at least two hours for one. They kind of take more time out from us to do all the stuff and it's even like harder for us to get part-time jobs, for example, because of the timetables we have. It's obviously very difficult with modern languages because you're kind of feeding off what other people are saying, their expressions, you know, it's often just casual conversation. So with the masks and the visors, even in person, it's quite difficult because a lot of it's quite muffled. In theatre and film, we, it requires a lot of practice, of like physical practice. So I think um, doing this, doing everything online can be a bit difficult because you don't get to practice that much. Well, obviously labs, we, we, do, we do them in person as much as we can, uh, but a lot of them are online. Uh, and with stuff like brains, kind of need to be in person to understand it fully like the places because it's so kind of intricate it's hard to do online. On my course there's a lot of maths and physics questions which when I was at secondary and college you could just go through with your teachers like in class easily but now everything's online it's much much more difficult to go through specific examples where you've got wrong what concepts you're not grasping. It makes my course a lot of more self-study than it's supposed to be 
it is supposed to be more input from the teachers but because it's online i think we have to put extra effort from our side which makes it difficult for us not having practicals is definitely a disadvantage at the moment instead of having um one per week we have one every two weeks Oh yeah, definitely. Got a massive desk. Um, I'm next to a window, which helps. I can look out of there with my eyes and be straight. It's more than suitable for studying. It's perfect. It's very comfortable. Um, it's kind of divided in two. So there is the um, working space, which is closer to the window, just me and my desk. And then there is my bed, and it's where I would go for chilling out and stuff. So it's a small room, but at the same time, it's really up to the person to make it suitable for that. My room, it is okay studying in, it's a little bit small. I'm staying at Oti Heights, and the room is actually quite good for studying. I have a, a big desk, and yeah, it's very suitable. So all my stuff's kind of cramped around in my area, um, but so I have to live, usually study down here, uh, the downstairs area, so we place, um, which is nice to get a break, but when I'm in lecture, yeah, I kind of get a little bit cramped in there. We're paying more for gas and electric because we're always at home, which is really annoying, and obviously the, go uh, the um, university hasn't done anything or even talked about that, which I, I don't know if I really expect them to, but it's just something that I'd like them to acknowledge. It just doesn't have a good lightning, so it's like you're all orange all of a sudden, or just the light starts to like go on and off and on and off again. Um, also, Wi-Fi, we're paying a fixed rate, but I know some people that aren't, and I'm always like dropping out of calls, even though we've got quite a big package. We've only got one face-to-face -face on our course, um, and most people are, who are self-isolating, they can ring in on Blackboard and join in with the people who are there in person. Um, and it seems okay, but it's quite a collaborative thing, so if you're not there, it's more difficult to get involved. Uh, well, that wasn't a problem, because everything was online, and we had like catch-up sessions with uh, with uh, with our teachers, and that that wasn't a problem. Lectures and seminars are anyways online, um, so that was not that was not a problem. The problem was the in-person teaching because everything was new. The teachers were actually also new in how to do stuff, so I got no practical um, support. Actually, uh, when I was in a self-isolation, all the seminars were online, so I didn't miss any. No, not yet. I have You're aware of it. it. Yeah, I'm aware of it. I, uh, yeah, I'm aware of it. I haven't used it yet. I think if you have problems adjusting, living, health-wise, you're supposed to approach them. No, I don't know what there are well-being services, um, I've been using them, I don't know anyone who has, I know people have been struggling with loneliness and anxiety and stuff, I don't know anyone who's gone to them, and honestly I don't really know how you would. Um, I've just, I, I, I think they contacted me for when I was self-isolating, just to make sure that I was fine and that um, my isolation was going okay, but after that I have this I am aware of them. Um, I've received a couple of emails also from my professors um, encouraging us to reach out if we ever needed something. Do you think you could find it if you need it? Do you think you could just look it up and find I it? I think, yeah, I reckon it's on the website somewhere so yeah. you could find it. I have to be honest, when I first moved to Bristol, it was very hard for me. So I had thought of reaching out to um, the wellbeing services. Um, I'm aware of them, but I'm not the kind of person who like asks for help. I just get on with it myself. Well, I was positive, so I got a, for coronavirus, so I got a call from the university asking if I had shopping and if I was generally okay, which was really nice. And they said that they, you know, I could call them whenever and there'd be follow up and blah, blah, blah. 
which was really, really nice. But the people that were negative in my household didn't really get much attention at all. And because they, I was focusing on getting better, they just had to kind of sit in their rooms and kind of focus on anything that they could. So I think they suffered more mentally and I think it'd be better for them to get more support a lot of the time. It's a hard question to answer. It's always easy to put yourself in someone else's position and say, oh, I would do that. The thing is, it, this is such a difficult situation and no one really knows what to do. I think I would reduce the number of students in one lecture so that uh, the professors can actually have proper interaction with individual students, ask them their questions, have some more time. I understand they don't have that much time. I just wish it would have been possible. Right now, online le learning is the best way to, to learn and be at the same time, so I wouldn't change anything, I think. Probably just make sure that I called everyone that was self-isolating no matter if they were positive or not and not just ask questions about do they need shopping more how are they getting on mentally obviously if it was possible more in-person kind of workshops because there's online workshops but it's kind of hard to concentrate when everyone's just asking questions maybe set up a more like maybe like this maybe a zoom call with someone because someone on the line might on the phone call might just not be because no one knows what support systems they have at home and things like that like not everyone has someone to call so maybe the university having volunteers maybe student volunteers to fit that role would be good it would be nice to actually learn in real time with a lecturer instead of learning asynchronously and then asking questions synchronously. So even if they were just like one-to-one -one, um, and they were offered by kind of the specialists, uh, that would be quite useful, uh, just kind of as like a catch-up or to go over stuff from the week that you might not have understood. To be honest, I think lecturers are doing a great job. They're very available. If we have issues, they're willing to fix them. I think a big thing is when we have the in-person lectures, I think struggles with keeping the uh, people who are isolating engaged in it or joined in. Make a Zoom call, just what, like a Zoom meeting while you were in person, but we couldn't hear anything and we were just there as an expectation. We couldn't actually hear what they were doing, so it was, it was just, it was like doing nothing. So yeah, I, I think that's a big thing to improve would be mixing the, the online people and the in-person people much better.